That's right. We got another NBA breakdown for you guys. And today it's a little different, you know, a little different. But we got the Kings versus the Timberwolves 2004 semi-Western Conference Finals Game 7. So for everybody who say we don't talk about the Kings or nobody talks about the Kings, yeah. And here goes the breakdown. Um, so this was an interesting game to me. You feel I, it me? Was. Started off. I felt like this oh, series was interesting, no? This whole series was interesting, no? Yeah, this series was interesting. Definitely the way it went. You know, yeah. Troy go over some, some numbers real quick. You know, he got his papers. All right, so game one went to the Kings, 98 to 104. Sorry, I'm kicking my daughter in the butt. Um, so t- uh, Kings took the first game, 98, 104, uh, 98. Timberwolves come back, take the second game, 94, 98. I mean, 89, sorry. Timberwolves take the third game, 114, 113 in overtime. And then Kings take game four, uh, 87, 81. Timberwolves take game five, 86, 74. And then Kings take game six, 104, 87, which leads us to game seven, which was finished by the Timberwolves, 83 to 80, on a almost game tying shot by Chris Weber. Um, so th- this is what I noticed from the game. KG came out, nice start, a little early, hit, hit a couple of baskets. He was he was a beast on rebound, 21 rebound. Oh, yeah, going crazy. Um, going crazy on the rebound. Um, Sam Cassell. Yeah, so middle middle first quarter, he started to really start putting that ball in the basket. And I know y'all heard us talk about Sam Cassell before, you know, and that and, and that's that's all fine. That's fine and dandy, you know, because you know, you guys always say there's no role players, no role players, role players back then. But why we keep talking about Sam Cassell and 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 Charles Oakley, you know, Sam Cassell's been on three different teams we have talked about him on. So Sam yep. Cassell. Very good start in this game. Um, there, uh, I'm gonna say the um, the Kings were trying to run early, like they were pushing it, throwing it right up to um, what's his name, Doug Christie. Uh-huh. They, they were getting the ball up the court real fast, um, trying to find some offense, trying to catch him slipping. Wolves did a good job at it, containing that. Um, they had the lead throughout. Until the end of the third quarter, I believe, is yep. when the Kings came back, took that third, took the took the lead, and then no other than Sam Sam Cassell. What's Sam Cassell with the who with the shot, right? Third quarter, mm-hmm. Kings took the lead, and then four quarter starts. No, start of the third. I don't know who hit that three for the Kings. Though I didn't write it. Was it Doug? Was it Doug Christie? The third? Out the third, yeah, out the third. I think Doug hit the three. Yeah, Doug hit, it, Doug uh, hit the three, yeah. and then and then Doug Christie hit the three, and then somebody came down and hit the two. I'm not sure if it was Sam or if it was somebody else. But from the start of the third, when they took that lead, you you see the Wolves make another push, get that right back up to ten, and then towards the end of that fourth, now all of a sudden it's a, it's a tie ball game, mm-hmm. and now the Wolves are trying to hold on to a lead where. Kevin Garnett throws, excuse me, Kevin Garnett throws a bad pass, mm-hmm. and, you know, puts the Kings in position to tie the game up. And I believe it was a foul after that, which gave them another chance to tie it up, which led to Chris Webber's open shot. Chris Webber did not make it. The Wolves won this by three. <clears throat> before I get to my key breakdowns and before I pass this to DJ, uh, some some uh, stats. Uh, Pager? Eight points. He went three for 12. Uh, shot 25% from the field. Mike Bibby, four for 13, three for seven from three-point line, 15 points. Doug Christie, which was the highlight of the of the Kings, he had 21 points, nine for 17, three for five from the three. Chris Webber, 16 points, eight for 17. He did not make a three. But the only three he took was the three he missed at the end of the game. Bloody mother in d block. I don't know what he did in this game. Oh, yes, I did. He did nothing. All right. He <laughs> seven points and six rebounds, two for four shooting. Couldn't even take shots. Who is the who is the best player on this team? I meant to I wanted to ask you guys before I continue. Who's the best player on this team? It was supposed to be Chris Weber. Hands down, Chris Weber. Chris yeah. Weber? 
Post Chris, Chris Webber, hands down. Chris Webber. I mean, well, Chris Webber got played by Doug Christie, but yeah. we're not here then. You feel me? Body D Black. You got 11 points. Brad Miller. I want to shout out Brad Miller. He was he was making some key baskets, you know, when, when they needed a basket. Brad was playing some tough defense. But on the Wolves side, woo, we got Kevin Garland, 32 and 21. He scored, he scored 14. All right. This is just a slight at Pippen, right? And the guy on Facebook that was telling me that Pippen ain't a choker. Guess what? <laughs> Same scenario, game seven, close out game, fourth quarter. Now, Garnett didn't give you, he gave you, I think, I forget how many he gave you in the first. I think it was nine. He gave you the first. He didn't score a a basket besides free throws in the second or the third quarter, I believe, or the second quarter. The whole second quarter, he didn't score. He went zero for four in the second quarter. The third quarter, he started scoring again, but it wasn't much. And in the fourth quarter, he got 14 and five rebounds in the fourth quarter. That's a closeout game stat line for the fourth quarter for you, Scotty Pippen. All right? For everybody that went defense, Scotty, that, that's a that's a stat line for you right there, Scotty. 14 and five, you feel me? He went out there and helped his team get the win. Even though he threw the bad pass at the end of it, uh, he helped his team go get that win. But let me get to my 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 keys uh, so we can break it down. And I can pass it over to DJ. So the, I got three keys. Um, I just want to shout out. I got a shout out at the end of it. It's Doug Christie. You know, played his ass off. But my first key to the war, I mean, the Wolves winning this, it was Wally. Wally, how you say his last name? Zerbiak. Wally Zerbiak. Wally what? Zerbiak. That's not how you say his damn name. Yeah, and it's, it's like absolutely how you say his name. That's not how you say his name. <laughs> <laughs> it's Boo up. Boo, that's not how you say his name. <laughs> Why do you know that? <laughs> that's not how you say his name. <laughs> oh, shit, Troy. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Was Troy, don't want, that Troy, name, Troy ain't trying to slaughter that name. He, he's going to slaughter <laughs> Wally's <laughs> name. He going to call that man. Yeah, bro. Wally, Wally played for your Celtics when they got to the Wally conference scat, finals. Scat pack, nigga. He going to call his ass. <laughs> Wally Serbian. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he is. But my first key is Wally. Wally had eight points. He had eight points in eight minutes in the first quarter, I believe, or first half when he came in the game. That was big for him. The second quarter, it was second quarter when he came off the bench. Uh, that was big for him. That kept them, you know, in the lead when uh, when they wasn't really finding offense. Wally stepped up and gave it to him. So that's my first key of the game. My second key of the game is what I just mentioned. KG's 14 and five rebounds in the fourth quarter when the game is on the line, that's a that's a that's the kind of stat line you want to have. You finished with 32, not 20. You didn't score two points in the full court. All right, Sam Cassell played big with a hurt back. You feel me, Scotty? The migraines don't mean nothing to me. Sam Cassell played with a hurt back. He was on the side getting shocked in his back in pain, bro. I saw it. You feel me? Uh, yeah. That that's my three. Wally, KG, Sam Cassell is why the Wolves won this game. EJ on you. Well, let's start off in the first quarter. Very, very sloppy opening to the game by both teams. Every time you look up, somebody was turning over the ball. Nobody was finishing. I think they – they uh, I can't remember if it was the Timberwolves or if it was the Kings that scored with like 11, 10, 10 minutes left and nobody scored again until it was like five minutes left in, in the first quarter. It was ugly. So starting off watching this game, I was like, this is going to be a bad game because I don't remember watching this game as a kid because – I think during this time, I did not have cable. Who knows? So I did not remember watching this game. Uh, key One key also is that something that's very overlooked or underlooked, whatever, however you want to say it. Uh, early when the Kings were actually cooking when they went against the Lakers, Hito Turgaloo was on this team, and he's no longer on the roster, and I thought he was until I, until I started watching the game, and I was like, where's Turgaloo? He didn't start. What the hell is going on? And I forgot Turgaloo wasn't on this team anymore, so that – I think that uh, definitely shook things up a little bit because that's at least one extra body you could throw a Garnett that's at least tall and lanky enough and will get after it. Doug Christie, I give you your flowers today, man. You played your ass off for your team. You you tried your hardest. And I'm sorry y'all, y'all lost, but, I mean, eventually this game came out to who was going to play better between Sam Cassell and Doug Christie. And Cassell, Cassell outscored him by two points. I mean, they lost by three. So, 
there it is. You could watch the game and tell Chris Webber was definitely not prime Chris Webber no more. He looked a tad bit slow. He couldn't do nothing with Kevin Gardner. Jump shots though. But yeah, yeah. Well, a shooter, a shooter gonna shoot. <laughs> but I mean, we're, it, it's not the Chris Webber we see in the 2002 series against the Lakers that was putting that was that was scoring in the post at will and things like that. So, I mean, the greats adjust their game. And he he found a way to score and still put up points. He still put up sixteen. Might not have been the most efficient, but hey, whatever works. I mean, what more can I say about Kevin Garnett? What what more can anybody say about Kevin Garnett? It's the fourth quarter of a closeout game, and you just take over. That's what you would expect in your MVP. That's what you would expect in technically the best player on the floor at the time. Trace McGrady, and it's crazy because I just brought up last week that Trace McGrady said 2004, Kevin Garnett, the year he won MVP, is probably a top five basketball player of all time that he's that he's ever played against. And watching the game, I was like, "Yo, Kevin Garnett was different. This dude was a beast in 04. I don't know what I don't know what he was eating for breakfast or what was going on, but I saw Kevin Garnett at more more towards the end of his career, and it made me forget how crazy he was as a Timberwolf. He was ridiculous." Sam Cassell got lots of love for him. Latrell's free will. I also forgot he was actually on the Timberwolves at the time. So uh, Latrell, but Latrell put up a good fourteen. A lot of people forget at one point Latrell was a very, very good player. He was capable of. He was a walking bucket. That, mm-hmm. that, that's what he was. That's I know nobody forgot about that dunk. Game. Yeah, I know nobody forgot about that dunk over Steve Nash. <laughs> so yeah, man, I, I like that. Who whoever uh picked this game, you picked a, a pretty good game. It was definitely better than the game than last week. Because the game from last week I did I thought it was trash. Um but Who's game? <laughs> I, I thought it was trash. It was it Shots wasn't the star. all over the place. Yeah. The, the 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 star did not show up in that game. It was definitely Charles Oakley and the guy, the other guys. <laughs> who I've started again on how nasty that is. <laughs> and, then, and then on the, the bull side, it was BJ Armstrong, Horace Grant, and Whoever else decided to put on a shirt from the locker room that day, but you know, Pete I got defeat. Uh, overall, good game, Wally. Like you, you mentioned, Wally. Wally played very good and uh, a hidden gem. Gary Trent Jr.'s dad is on the Timberwolves team. I mean, he didn't do much, but hey, he was there. Key. Uh, no, me, man. I just when I look at these stats, bro. That's kind of what I do. I looked at the game, of course. But I just look at stats, man. When I look at this game, if you if you told me coming into the game that Kevin Garnett and Sam Cassell was going to be the best two players on the court, they're going to win. It's that, it's, it's that simple. You're not going to tell me that KG is going and, – and, and to DJ point, Chris Webber, I think, only played 23 games that regular season. He was hurt. And that was like his – So was Sam Cassell. Yeah, but – it's different for a guy like Sam Cassell because he's not the number one option. He's not getting keyed in on like a guy like Chris Webber getting guarded by one of the best defensive players at that time, which was KG. So it's a little bit different. But, um, yeah, regardless of that, Mike Bibby should have been better for sure. Like he should have outplayed Sam Cassell at that time. That didn't happen. And, uh, yeah, when you look up and see Doug Christie as your leading scorer, you're probably going to fucking lose. That's just how that goes. 100%. 100%. Like, how that, that's how that go. Great performance, but 100%. Absolutely. Shout out to Doug. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So, a few things that I've seen from this game. Number one, <clears throat> Chris Webber did not have a good series. Now, to Boo Op's point, he did not play the whole season, so he wasn't relatively healthy. But to Troy's point, you're not healthy. Get your ass from out there. Don't fucking play. Hey, Amen. Healthy enough to get out there. That's and my point. Run around Always my point. Shoot, so <laughs> healthy enough to fucking play. So if you gotta uh, go, was, give me 25 uh, and 12. Hey, no excuses from that point. Uh, Chris Weber was absolutely horrible in this series, and there was a reason why. And his name was Kevin Garnett. Okay, Kevin Garnett had that man in prison, not jail. Okay, prison. All right, Different he thing. had him frustrated like a. I ain't. I I used to. I grew up. Obviously, grew up in the California Bay Area, so I grew up watching a lot of Warriors games, a lot of Kings games. Right, I grew up watching a young Chris Weber. I grew up watching him at Michigan, bro. 
I did not see him frust- frustrated like how he was frustrated in his game against Kevin Garnett. And I understand he might not have been fully healthy, but bro, I I need you a little better. I need you a little better than that. The only time he would actually get a shot is when they would send somebody to flash at the hoop to get KG off his spot and to give Weber enough time to shoot that elbow jumper, which was which was key whenever he got it. But if you had Johnson rotating in the back of, of KG, which would happen a lot of times, who also came up with some really good defensive plays in this game, KG could stay on his spot and just keep Chris Webber, Chris, Chris Webber in jail. And that's literally what he did. He didn't have to move on his spot. There was a point in time at the end of this game, I think it was like 30, like less, less than 30 seconds left. Um, KG's at the perimeter and he gets a key steal. Literally, key step, bro. Put long ass on this. Look, forward. I'm not. I wasn't even gonna get there yet, boo. Because I'm gonna get to the defensive prowess that that man was 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 on this game. He ain't boiling he ain't boiling water yet. Go ahead. Literally, go ahead. You simmering. I see you. And say that you know this is how Scotty Pippen this and Scotty Pippen that to bring to, to bring the choice point. This is how an MVP, not only MVP but the star person of his damn team, is supposed to fucking play. Supposed to play. Let's go ahead and look at these numbers, man, because I really don't think that y'all that people really understand this is how you're supposed to perform as a star player on your team in a closeout fucking game, especially when the game starts to get close because sack, they started to make a push. Doug Christie came up with some solid effort plays, and this was the thing. A lot of effort was missed in, was missed in this game on Mike Bibby's part, on uh, on um, freaking uh, Pages, especially Pages' part. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I think he was all NBA that year, too. All NBA that year. Peja, what was going on? Like, I would have honestly, I would have took him out. I think, I think they had to stick with him because Bobby Jackson didn't dress. He was hurt that game. And I think they had, they, that, was their, that was their other shooter. So they were like, damn, we can't go to our other shooter. But let's go ahead and look at these numbers, man. <clears throat> 32, five blocks from Kevin Garnett. Five. Shit. Come on, bro. Mm-hmm. Four steals, two assists, mm-hmm. and 21 rebounds. 66, 63% from the three from the free from the free throw line. This nigga even took a three and made it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was he was tripping. He was tripping that day. He was like, I'm in my bag. Next thing you know, I gotta give a shout out to Mr. Choke that hoe. Let's show Spree Rep. Okay. 14 points and over half for points. All right, thank you, but that's 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 the exact animation I was looking for. Those are effort points. This is the, this is the thing a lot of people like a lot of people forget, bro. A lot of people don't like to give credit to the role players that give un unmatched effort. That is what wins a lot of these goddamn games in these finals. When you have the star players that's going off your KB, your KGs for thirty two, your Sam Cazells for twenty three. Guess where all that rest of that stuff is coming? That's coming from effort. That's coming from the Wally Zerbiax. That's coming from the Latrell Spree Rose. That's coming out of nowhere and getting those loose balls and pushing it, pushing the pace to the basket when they're in transition and they see the, the defense is, is a little lax today. Just go, oh yeah, I'm gonna take this in my own hands. Yeah, that shit is big. That is that that play that plays a big role. That and I think <clears throat> me personally, the Kings were careless with the fucking ball. Same problem persists. Same problems I see now, same problems I see back in the day. They were careless as shit with the ball. Take care of the damn ball. Lazy passes, um, horrible passes, bad shots, um, not boxing out on rebounds. That's the reason why KG had so many rebounds. And if you look at it, um, Irvin Johnson, that's the reason why he was killing on the inside. Because they were lazy on they were just, they were lazy on defense, lazy on rebounds, bro. And it came down to literally the last shot and Chris Weber couldn't hit it. That was the that, that was that was the that was literally the, the, the that was the script of the game. Came down to Chris Weber trying to hit an open to hit an open shot and he couldn't hit it. Now you can blame that on health. You can blame that on him. Not it don't matter, bro. You got to hit that shot. You're the star player of that team because Kevin Gar- because Kevin Garnett gave you everything he could. And at the end of the day, it showed they won the goddamn game. Got to and and and, and, and so. man, if I was Doug Christie. I would have had to whoop they ass. Oh God! Oh I yes, to, I would, I would, bro. I would have had to, man, yeah, somebody get his ass whooped. He was, the only, one, he was the only one out there that looked like he wanted to play. Fourth quarter, gave. less than less than five minutes left. He presses Sam Cassell and gets a steal and a foul to get them possession, and it's a three point game. He's the only one doing that. Everybody else is just standing around watching ball, watching shit happen. Doug Chris is the only one out there giving effort. That man, yeah, y'all would have had to see me in the locker room. Period. Period. Yeah, they, 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 they was gonna have to holler at me for real. That boy yeah, Page, I, 
Averaged 24 points that regular season. 24, you came and gave me a third of that. Boy, I would beat your ass. Mm -hmm. I would beat your ass. Boy, you got me fucked up today, boy. This shit is crazy. You're getting Jordan. This shit is crazy. Don't care. Yeah, you you're getting the piece. You get piece stuff, bro. As soon as I see you, I got, I got a sock. There's, no there's no way. There's there's no abs. There's absolutely no way. It, 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 nothing to talk about. Like, Why y'all about D Rock? Hey, D Rock. Why do you gotta get in tune? No, Vladi would have got stomped out. Bro, no, Vladi, Vladi, Vladi was like 82 years old. Man, we are gonna let him slide. Still would have got stomped out. He's old. He's old as shit. With a minus fifteen oh, plus minus. Now, I, now when oh, I did say Chris Webber was the best player on that team, I got to take that back. That was uh clearly Peja Stojokovic. Yeah, he was the best player on that team. Oh, yeah, Stoy was he, 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 he got outplayed by the Dougies. Hey man, if I'm du if I'm Doug Christie, shout out to Doug Christie because he finally got a nice little coaching job, and you, you can tell that he's a smart player for the better this year. But if I was Doug Christie, all them niggas walking home. All y'all walking home, y'all can't get on the bus, y'all not getting on the plane. Don't even look at me. You walking home, bro. I see you niggas in sack. That's a long walk. <laughs> check it out, bro. I gave y'all my best game of the play. I think that's his best game of the playoffs. Let me check it, was. it out. <laughs> it quite literally like, was. Bro, bro, I'm 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 gonna have to holler at y'all, bro. I'm I'm talking about I'm tossing the <laughs> locker room with these. Imagine hey, hey, imagine been... you walk in. Imagine I walk in and I'm Doug Chris. I'm like, all right, y'all, tonight I'm gonna give y'all 21 points. Everybody in, in on on Sacramento is like, oh yeah, we killing these dudes. Twenty one, man, they laughing. From three. That's what they doing. They like Doug, sit your ass down. It's about twenty one points. Well, your ass ain't scoring no fucking twenty one points. You gonna give me seven? <laughs> yeah. 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 And play yeah. and, show, yeah. and, and, and go shut down the trail, man. That's all we really need from you. And they he did that. Latrell didn't. Latrell didn't have a good game. Latrell was taking yeah. horrible ass shots, bro. This, this, really <clears throat> this was a nasty work by the Kings, man. If they would have got a little bit, I, if Peja would have hit 15 points, they'd have won this game. That's the reality. A little bit better, bro. I'm telling you. You would have been walking home, bro. Game. You, you can't fly back. You got to walk home. Yeah, yeah, 15, uh, had he, had he just scored 11, they would have tied the game. Literally. Mm -hmm. Got 11 yeah, from was, Brad Miller on the game. They was tripping, tripping. That's going to do it for the breakdown.